among your red light foods in mastering diabetes is mm -hmm. are the oils, mm -hmm. which are unsaturated. So can you guys talk about that? Sure. So oils tend to be the oils still have saturated fat in them. So there's there's it's not that they're saturated fat free. It's just that they have a higher proportion of unsaturated fat than they do saturated fat. And it depends on which oil we're talking about. So coconut oil is a perfect example. That that oil actually is predominantly saturated fat with small amounts of unsaturated fat. But for the rest of the oils, whether you're looking at olive oil or canola oil or rice bran oil, um, those tend to be predominantly unsaturated with still a saturated fat component for sure. So the thing with oil that can become problematic is the there's there's two things to pay attention to when it comes to fat consumption. Number one, the total number of grams of fat that enter your mouth per day. Okay, so your total fat content is the most important indicator. And then secondarily, it's your saturated fat content as a proportion of that total fat. So we have over, empirically discovered that people who consume generally over approximately 30 grams of fat per day, of total fat per day, end up having carbohydrate metabolism problems. Okay, and of course that number is variable. That number is variable based off of your age, your sex, your height, your disease history, uh, how active you are. But as a general rule of thumb, somewhere around the number 30 is what we have discovered experimentally with many people that uh, it seems to be sort of the tipping point. So if you can control your total fat intake to be less than 30 grams approximately per day, then you end up in the insulin sensitive zone. If your carbohydrate, I'm sorry, if your fat intake is greater than 30 grams per day, then you end up developing more insulin resistance and more blood glucose irregularities over the course of time. So that's the most important indicator. Now, the second most important indicator is saturated fat. And saturated fat has been uh, demonstrated both in, in animal models as well as in humans um, to be a very, very powerful uh, insulin, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's, it's the one component of your diet that most powerfully blocks insulin action. Okay, and I have to choose my words very carefully when I say this because sometimes if you use the word insulin resistance, people get pissed off. But the idea here is that when there is a increase in saturated fat at the level of the muscle and at the level of your liver, saturated fat blocks the glucose uptake process. It blocks the glucose uptake process because it inhibits insulin action in both tissues. And so there's, there's a wide collection of research by Gerald Shulman and his colleagues, by uh, Rodin and his colleagues, by Philip Randall and his colleagues all the way back in the 1960s. And the, 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 uh, the research actually dates back to the 1920s, going all the way back to J.P. Hemsworth and beyond. So the, the presence of saturated fat is, is the most problematic, but we have to sort of interpret the presence of saturated fat in the context of the presence of, of total fat. And that's why when you're consuming oils, to answer your question, how can they become problematic when they're predominantly unsaturated? Well, generally people who consume oil in their diet are well over the threshold of 30 grams of fat per day, total fat per day. Because one tablespoon, one teaspoon of oil can easily contribute between 14 and 20 grams of fat in one serving. So if you do that once or twice a day, boom, right there, you're over the threshold. And then in addition to that, if you sum total all the saturated fat that you get from other foods as well, then that puts you well into 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 grams per day. Fascinating.